With the introduction of ClearID version 3.3, users can now record ClearID filters in Photoshop Actions. Photoshop Actions are essentially macros, or a recorded series of steps that can be easily repeated on an individual file or multiple files. Actions are stored within Action Sets, located inside the Photoshop Actions panel. Action Sets can be imported or exported, which allows users to archive any custom actions used for a particular case. When ClearID 3.3 is installed, three action sets are installed and available via the Photoshop Actions Panel Flyout menu. The ClearID 3.3 Base Action Set, which includes our hotkeys, an action set containing a processing example action, and finally, an action set that can be used to store your own custom actions. The ClearID Base Action Set must be loaded in the Action Panel in order to use the ClearID hotkeys, such as F6 to import images, or F7 to open the ClearID interface. To load the ClearID Action Sets, open the Actions panel via the Windows menu, Actions. If you have an old ClearID Action Set from a previous installation, simply select it and either drag it down to the trash can or click the trash can icon to delete it. Next, go to the Actions panel Flyout menu and one at a time load the three ClearID Action Sets. The Base Action Set, the Processing Example Set, and our End User Recorded Set. To use an action, we can either press the associated hotkey on our keyboard, such as F6 for importing images into our layer stack through ClearID, or we can select the action from the list and simply click the Play button in the Actions panel. Let's take a look at our Processing Action Example in our second action set. So I'm going to import a color image I'll click OK to run the hash and import it through our F6 interface. And then I'm going to select the action in Group 2, our Processing Action Set example. This is a DCT JPEG detector, which applies a false color to help us identify DCT compression within an image. I'll select it and then click the Play button to run the action. As you can see, by applying the interactive channel selector on the hue channel and choosing false color, the DCT macro blocks become much more evident. Now let's take a look at creating a new action using ClearID 3.3. First, we have to select an action set to store our new action in. I'm going to select our end user recorded action processing set. Or I could create a new set by clicking the new action set button in the actions panel. Once I've selected the action set I want to store the action in, I simply click the New Action button from the Actions panel. I give the action a name. In this case, I'm going to create an action for our verification report. And I'd like to assign it a hotkey so that I can always call up the verification report simply by pressing F4. I click record and now everything I do within the Photoshop interface is going to be recorded. It is important to understand when recording ClearID 3.3 filters in actions, you need to call the ClearID interface through the filter menu, not through the F7 action. So in this case, I'm going to go to the filter menu, ClearID workflow, I'm going to choose tab 7, select generate verification report and click OK. Once I've done that, I'm going to give my report a name, click Save. After the verification report has completed, I can stop recording this action. And so there the report is complete. I click Stop on the record. And so this action, verification report, includes only one step, which is to launch the ClearID interface verification report. Now anytime I want to run a verification report, I simply press my F4 key. Any ClearID filter can be recorded as an action, providing that we access the filter through the filter menu. So when we have a situation where we're applying the same settings across multiple images, we can leverage Photoshop's batch processing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse these action folders here, and I'm going to load some actions that I've saved for a particular case processing. 
and I just saved out the actions as an ATN file. We'll load that in here and take a look at this action. So I've called it Color Safe Levels and Edge Enhancer. Um, pretty obvious that I'm applying a Color Safe Levels and the actual settings all stored in the action as well. And then our Edge Enhancer uh, settings also stored as part of this action. So I can simply apply it to an individual image here, of course. So let me go ahead and delete this last layer using our F12 hotkey to delete that layer and then just select this and run it and it's going to apply those settings through an action to this particular image. Well that's great but let's look at leveraging this for batch processing. We can do that a few different ways. I'm going to close out of the image that I'm working on here. So I'm going to go to the file menu, scripts, image processor. On the image processor window, we identify what are our source images, where are we saving them to, how do we want to save them, and what action are we going to run. So I'm going to select my case folder on the desktop here, case 12345, this folder containing my original images as my source. I will select the processed as where I'd like to save those files. I want to save them as TIFF images. and down here in the last part of the image processor screen, I'm going to identify which action I want to apply to all of those images. If we click the drop down arrow, we'll see all of the action sets that are currently loaded into my actions panel. If the action set isn't loaded into the panel, it won't be available here. So here's my case one, two, three, four, five action set and the only action within that set. So I'm good to go. I can simply click run and it's going to walk through all of those images and apply the color safe level settings and the edge enhancer settings in a batch process, saving us a tremendous amount of time when applying the same settings across multiple images. And to take a look at the end results, we'll go into our process folder, TIFF images, and our end result images are all stored uh, there after the color safe levels and edge enhancement clarifications. Now I mentioned there's a few other ways of leveraging actions for batch processing. One of them is through the file automate batch window. Pretty much the same type of interface but a little bit more capability in regards to uh, control. We first select in this interface, in the batch window interface, uh, the action set and the action that we're going to use. So I would go to case one, two, three, four, five, choose that action. Our source folder, um, we can also choose to use uh, open files or import or uh, load files from bridge. Um, override any open commands that might be stored in the action, process uh, subfolders, uh, suppress file open option dialogues, so on and so forth, stop on errors, and then we define our destination. So save and close or save it to a folder location. We can choose that folder location and we can choose some additional things such as the file naming method and renaming the documents as they're processed. And last but not least, I can also access Image Processor through Adobe Bridge. So I've navigated to the case folder, our original files. I can simply select those files, go to the Tools menu, Photoshop, Batch, or Image Processor. Make sure you visit our website, www.oceansystems.com, and keep an eye out for future webinars and training videos on ClearID version 3.